What can I do? Is a question that wise men ask if they desire to maximize destiny. There is always something God puts in your hand. You identify it, you refine it, you deploy it. Not just to give you money. Money is not the, the ultimate intent behind deploying your gifts. Being a blessing, creating impact and rewards only become natural. Finally, what is the final question? Where am I going when this life is over? Where am I going? It's a question of destiny. Even eternal destiny. The wise do not stop in celebrating their giftings. The wise do not stop in celebrating all of the things that they achieve here on the earth. As much as we shouted amen and we celebrated all the things that God was giving us to excel. The question, where am I going, is a very powerful question. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. 1 Corinthians 15, 19. Koinonia, let's read together. Ready? One to read. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. One more time. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. You know what this means? This means that as much as it is to achieve things, buying cars, buying houses, strategic achievements, all of these things are wonderful and they are part of the elements that help you to maximize life and destiny. But let me tell you the truth. One reality that all men must come to terms with is that eventually your time in the earth would come to an end either by his return or your exiting again let me finish the story I started with so that glorious morning I was in the city of worry preparing my notes for my session that morning when I got to see that the late Dr. Miles had departed this earth and sadly, it was in a plane crash. I was quite devastated. I asked a lot of questions. Now I know better. I haven't grown a lot more than I was then. You can imagine 2014. And I thought to myself, I said, my God, how brief life can be. You only need to be alive for a few weeks to learn the vanity of acquiring everything here and not having an eternal consolation. Our world is full of people today who have passed on to glory. It is in the matter of death that both the rich and the poor do not have any advantage against themselves and above themselves. When it has to do with the issue of death and transition beyond this realm, the rich is not greater than the poor. The educated is not more advantageous than the uneducated. Male, female, young, old. Death or transition as I would call it seems to be a very ruthless equalizer it can bring both the rich and the poor to their knees it can bring both the learned and the unlearned to their knees it brings whites and blacks to their knees it brings first world nations and third world nations to their knees you would think because of the abundance of resources people should not die you would think because of the vast extent of education, people should not die. You would think because of the excellency of achievements, people should not die. You would think because of the dexterity of people's health, they should not die. There are people who die today with no known medical cause. They just write something, but their health was impeccable and they still died. When it has to do with the matters of rounding up your life in the earth, Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to this preacher. If all that we have only ends here, you do not have much. Thank God for certificates. Press for them. Thank God for secular achievements and achievements of any sort. Press for them. Build the business. Expand the ministry. But in all you're doing, have it at the back of your mind. Nobody has gone out of the earth with one dollar one naira one pound it doesn't work that way if you cannot carry your physical body out talk less whatever 
you know, is physical there. A quote from Dr. Miles Monroe. Here's what he said. The richest place on earth is not the gold mines in Congo or South Africa or some part of Africa. It's not the oil mines in Nigeria and the Middle East. He said the wealthiest place on earth, he called it the symmetry. Why? Because books are lying there that were never written. Businesses covered with sand that never came to the light of day. Speeches that could alter the thinkings of generations. Like I have a dream. Imagine if he never said that. The press for justice and equality captured in an intelligent person's presentation has rewritten the liberation narrative of many, many territories today. What if these people never emerged? But my question is now that they are gone, what becomes of them? I hope you know that every secular celebration ends on earth. The parameter for celebrating people in heaven and the life beyond works by a separate set of rules. You would think that if you were a billionaire or you were a CEO or you were some man of God, by the time you stand before God, they would arrange you based on that rating. Chances are excellent that if I come into an occasion, perhaps for the purpose of honor, you would say, Apostle Joshua Selman, please, your seat is in front. It doesn't happen that way after this life is done. You will join a very rootless queue where everybody stands and the works of men will be tried. Among the many things that I'm grateful to God for, for the mentorship of men like Dr. Miles Monroe, extending to that of people like Billy Graham, is the consciousness of eternity. That if only in this life, oh, this koinonia you see, we are not carrying it to heaven. It is a platform to help us serve the purposes of the kingdom whilst we are alive and within the time that is allotted. In this place right now, there are weak old babies. In this place right now, are children under 10. In this place right now, are teenagers listening to me. In this place right now, are young adults stepping into their early 20s. In this place right now, are adults maximizing their life. In this place right now, are people who have crossed the 50-year mark. In this place right now, are people who are rounding up their lives. Death is a strange equalizer. It can bring the entire achievements of a man to naught in one moment. By reason of what I do, when people die, usually people try to inform me either to pray for them, attempting to raise them back, or just to help manage the grief and all of that. You've heard me say these things again and again. Let me tell you the truth. If you've stood before many dead bodies, there is a sermon only a dead body can preach. That body has to be dead to preach that sermon. And I have listened to the sermons that have come from many dead bodies. Great bodies, but now dead bodies. Educated bodies, but now dead bodies. Warrior bodies, excellent in stature. Sickly bodies, healthy bodies that died. And all of them lie before life. The end of the achievement of all men is provided you are breathing. If you are not breathing, the story is over as far as this realm is concerned. The only thing you can transport out of this realm is one singular relationship backed up by your years of investment to the kingdom. These are the only things that sustain the power to have value beyond life. Dr. Miles taught us that in all our achievements, we should not be carried away by mundane things. We will build the houses. We will feed the poor. We will extend the influence to the farthest points as God grants grace. But in all that doing, we will not forget to remind ourselves and remind all those who are within our care. The Bible says in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, it says, take heed to yourself first and then to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God which he purchased with his own blood. Take heed to yourself. 
I've preached it many times here. I won't die young by the grace of God. But I will never fear death. Never. It is unnecessary to fear death when Jesus is in your heart. It is unnecessary to fear death when you have found your place in life and you are spending your life serving him. For me, like Paul, I will emphasize again as I've done, to live is Christ and to die is gain. You don't run away from profit. The reason why we contend for longevity is not the fear of death. It is to allow us ample time to serve the purposes of the kingdom within the script allotted for us. Listen to me. If Christ tarries, a day will come. Nobody looking at me here will be in the earth. It will be another set of people. The same way there were other sets of people before our arrival. The wisdom here is that in all your getting degrees, in all your pressing to be an exceptional person, in all your passion to do ministry and excel in ministry, in all your passion to want to get financial resources as important as they are, in all your desire to maximize destiny as we title this talk, it is important for you to have it at the back of your mind that anything without Jesus only ends here. The continuation of your relevance is directly connected to your being with Jesus and your receiving his life. I have seen people die. I know they were not saved. It was a painful feeling because based on the authority of scripture, the destiny of all sinners and all believers, unbelievers is defined. As painful as that may be, maybe some of them were your loved ones. Today, right now, it's an uncomfortable truth. But if we are to judge by the integrity of Scripture, we know where they are. And it is not a good place. Some of them left this morning. Some of them left last week. Some of them entered the new year. We laughed together, but they are gone today. Some of them laughed when we preached. They mocked when we cried, calling the name of Jesus. They mock to scorn as we roll before the king of kings. And for them, destiny has folded. Someone came to church tonight. And in the midst of all you have heard me teach, you shouted amen for promotion. You shouted amen for increase. You shouted amen for prophetic relocation. I hope you will shout amen when I mention Jesus. I hope you will shout amen when I mention the wisest question that all men must ask and answer. Now listen, you can delay in answering every other question I ask. Life will forgive you, but there is one question that when you delay, the consequence is eternal. There are people who will discover and answer the question, who am I, when they are 40 or 50. It's not the best, but at least it's better than nothing. There are others who will answer the question, where am I coming from, late in life. There are others who answer the question, why am I here late in life? There are others who answer the question, what do I have late in life? Life will forgive you. Even Abraham, he started a major part of his journey from 75. Life forgave him. But can I tell you the truth? There is one question that if, even if you answer and you do not answer properly, both life and eternity will not forgive you. That is the question, where are you going from here? You came to church because for some of you, you've answered all four, remaining the fifth. You have a healthy perception of yourself. Congratulations. You know where you come from because you've hung around church. You understand instinctively and by training why you are here. You have a vast understanding of your potentials. You've attended all kinds of leadership seminars. And they have trained you into piecing together your value. You can articulate them with uncanny mastery. But the one question the Lord is asking you tonight, and this wraps up my contemplation with us today, and also in honor to the late Dr. Miles Munro, where are you going? I'm not sure when Dr. Miles Munro said that he knew that he would soon be gone. I'm not sure. I never heard him say that he was going to go early. Even though I heard him say very confidently that even if he left early, it didn't matter. 
little did he know he was prophesying and truly he left all of us will not go the same day our times are in the hands of God there are those who started this year you know some of them today they've joined the cloud of witnesses and some painfully are in hell my final call to you is that the greatest secret of your confidence in life should not be the cars that are parked in your garage not the amounts that are stashed in your account not the certificates that you have not the jewelries that are stashed in your box not the clothes that fill your room not the awards that decorate your office not the paraphernalia that life has brought around you the greatest basis of your confidence should be that in all of this if all I have is Jesus I've got something more than gold I will tell it to the world Jesus is more than gold I don't know how true it is but I was told that one great giant of faith years ago when he left they went to search his accounts and search other things hoping that there would be so much money there and I don't know they didn't find as much as would be expected and according to the story the people were surprised this man was so wealthy we knew him to be wealthy while he served what suddenly happened that he's long gone he was told that the man would put a big table to eat and invite everybody and say come and dine and eat honestly let me tell you don't wait till you are old before you understand the vanity of life without Christ no certificate will replace your refusal of Jesus when life is done 